With that, let's now put the spotlight on the digital banking landscape in the country. There seems to be a lot of competition, a lot of new fintech players coming in. Incumbents like you know big giants, big uh, private sector giants, as well as the PSU giants are looking to up their digital game as well. HDFC Bank has also set up uh, something called the, the Smart Hub Vyapar app. Clearly, they are trying to sort of attract more of the mid-market merchants onto this digital platform. So what are we looking at over the next one year or so in the fintech space? What is the growth outlook? Uh, to talk about this, we have with us Mr. Parag Rao, Country Head Payments, Liability Products, Consumer Finance and Marketing at HDFC Bank. Thank you very much for uh, joining us, Mr. Mr. Rao. Great to have you on the, on the program. And uh, sort of, so the sort of thought process behind having this conversation is to really understand how large incumbent banks like HDFC Bank, how are they turning on the competition to a lot of the fintechs that have had an early start in terms of digital adoption, whether it's payments or onboarding you know, newer customers. And all this is happening against a, the a backdrop of a regulator watching with a Hawkeye and pulling up banks, pulling up NBFCs and fintechs for whatever lap lapses that there would be in the digital platform. Your opening thoughts, sir. Okay, fine. So I think the thought process is pretty clear. Uh, one is uh, at an economic front, as you see, uh, the consumption is growing uh, on an overall basis. We're growing. We've got a great outlook over the next many years uh, for consumption growth and, and GDP growth. That's number one. As a very large bank, we are in the midst of driving a lot of uh, and our products drive a lot of this consumption-based uh, growth for India. We have the entire suite of financial service products. We are the market leader in acceptance in the acquiring business, uh, 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 in excess of 40%. Uh, the products which these small and medium merchants actually require in their financial services space, the entire suite we offer. Uh, we are the largest payment services provider in the country as a bank. Uh, and so therefore, uh, uh, also when you look at our retail presence, we, are, we have amongst the largest um, uh, branch networks in the country. We source a lot of our financial services through the branches. There's a deep connect with rural and semi-rural India. All of this, all of this makes for two or three great assets. So we know our customer. We've got great distribution across the length and breadth of the country. We have a full suite of products. Uh, come in digital. Uh, in today's landscape, I won't go through the entire landscape of how the digital uh, India has, has grown, but suffice it to say that uh, customers and even merchants and, and MSME require digital solutions on top of their conventional solutions. So banking uh, is, is now taken two forms. There's the conventional banking, there's a the face-to-face banking, there's also digital banking. Um, and, and banks need to continue offering hi, digital uh, solutions for hi, good the morning. needs of the customers, including the newer set of customers. For but, Parag, hi, good morning. Uh, and, and good morning, Prashant here. Good to see you again back in the program. Apologies to interrupt you there. We, ha we <laughs> uh, can, can you hear me? Uh, uh, can you hear me, Parag? Good morning. Prashant here. Sorry, just lost your connection. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, I just lost your connection, yeah. Uh, okay, but we're back on, right? Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, uh, paucity of time. So, uh, and, and apologies to rush you along. <laughs> uh, but it was a good summary. I, 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 so, just a couple of points, uh, Parag. Uh, so, do you believe, uh, yeah. first of all, so growth, credit growth has come off across segments, not just for you, but uh, for the entire uh, industry. Uh, I mean, everything has come off compared to where growth rates were one year ago. We recently got the GDP numbers, GDP growth numbers. Uh, many believe that a lot of this has been driven by uh, regulatory me measures. I mean, for example, fintech as a space, etc., is largely. I'm sorry, Prashant, to interview. Sorry, I'm not able to yeah. hear you clearly at all. I'm sorry, Prashant. Connection is too. Poor. Okay, I think what we'll do is, Parag, we'll just uh, we'll just get that connection back on, uh, and and uh, we'll we'll have you back on in just a bit from now. That Parag Rao is with us. Uh, I think we've re-established that connection. Uh, Parag, apologies for that. Uh, got you in a bad line. I hope you can hear me clearly. Prashant, this side. My, my question to you is, we, do you think, as we head into 2025, uh, some of the regulatory scrutiny, and uh, 2024 was about RBI cracking the whip. Uh, do you think, uh, you know, it, and, and that, of course, has also affected consumption, etc., because bank credit has tightened quite a bit. I mean, lending has tightened quite a bit. Do you think it'll ease off? Okay. 
Well, let me put it this I think I, I think the, the, the changes or the introductions which the regulator brought in were, in my parlance, as you call, corrections. Um, in a rapidly growing market, you see some aberrations coming up in some parts of the economy. Some of some of the actions taken by the regulator were more to correct it. Uh, I think the policy uh, which the which the regulator is rolling out is pro growth. Um, their thought is to really encourage growth, but then you need to ensure that aberrations don't happen in the marketplace. So some of these are corrections, if you may call so. So we look at it as um, imminent parts of the whole journey which we go through. Regulation is there to exist, and it's, I think, required. Um, uh, but uh, our outlook on growth is robust. Right. Uh, Parag, uh, got that. Another question. Unsecured uh, has kind of slowed down quite sharply. I mean, it's not new. It's been happening for the last many quarters. Has that, as that has gone down, uh, are, are, uh, is the reliance on cards increasing or do you see, car I mean, that's like a proxy to unsecured lending. Uh, do you think, do you see a pickup in that, uh, in, in spending on cards? Uh, well, yes and no. So, cards is part of unsecured, it's part of the entire unsecured lending space. And on an overall basis, if you see, uh, I think uh, there's been a slowdown in the growth of unsecured lending. Uh, so that's one part. Uh, having said this, I think within within the entire payment space, uh, UPI today continues to demonstrate the highest percentage growth. The next is credit cards. Uh, credit cards, is the way we look at it in the bank, uh, is a natural extension to um, millions of consumers who are on UPI, and so that's a natural progression of the next product which you do. So we see credit cards also growing robustly. So, Mr. Rao, uh, if you could give us some sense that, for, let's say for HDFC Bank itself, considering digital is becoming such a huge channel now, uh, if we talk about the lending side, uh, you know, whether it's unsecured consumer finance or whether it, it, it is uh, even sort of reaching some of the MSMEs or the smaller companies, how much will the digital channel contribute? And similarly, if I talk about onboarding customers, because the RBI has been very cautious about digital-only loans or the digital-only customers as well. And in terms of uh, onboarding more customers, what can we expect in uh, the coming year for HDFC Bank per se? Some numbers or some rough data points will help. Uh, well, I can talk to you about the digitization percentage. Well, uh, it, it, the entire MSME sector, if you see, is uh, uh, traditionally uh, is all about documentation, physical meeting, you know, contact point verification, so on and so forth. So we've been able to successfully digitize a large portion of the journey. Admittedly, I think it's not yet 100%. But depending on what kind of product, uh, the digitization, let's say, in the acquisition and the onboarding space, ranges from anywhere between 30 40% going up to almost 80%. Uh, that's helped bring a lot of our efficiency, and it's also helped uh, in your do-it-yourself kind of acquisition. So, for example, our Smart Hub Vyapar, which we talked about a little earlier, is our digital merchant app. Uh, close to about 95% of the onboarding journey is digital and you get merchants can just download the app from the Play Store and, and, and become merchants within a couple of minutes. They, they can start UPI transactions within minutes. Uh, so that's an example of the digitization journey which we've done. Similarly, if you look at, say, underwriting, which is more of a back-end function, uh, anywhere between 40 to 50% today on an average across uh, asset categories, both secured and unsecured, is completely digitized. In some cases, we go as uh, almost as high as 90 to, to 100%, so, so, especially in our uh, instant loans, which we... No, so my... my uh, uh, sorry, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so my question was more in terms of adding to the business, adding to the book, while, of course, digitization is a massive part at the back end of, you know, existing, you know, uh, existing customers as well. Uh, if I were to ask you in a very simple way, if you look at the, the extent or the component of the business that's coming in, X of branches, not physical branches, the digital-only business. Now, whether it is in consumer finance, whether it is on the, the mid-market book, the MSME book, how much incremental growth can come in from the digital channel alone for HDFC Bank? You know, will it add incrementally 5% uh, to the overall assets under management in, in these different segments, 10%? Just trying to get that sense. 
Okay, so let me put it this way. Our book is very large, so you know, giving a percentage will sort of distort the picture. But let me put it on an incremental basis, depending on the category of buildings. For example, in credit cards, close to almost 70 to 80 percent of our incremental acquisition is digital. Uh, depending on the asset category which you have, again, that percentage ranges between 25 percent to almost 40, 45 percent. So that's the contribution on an incremental basis. And uh, as the years go by, obviously, it will build up into our stock. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, Parag, just one more question. I mean, you're the, you're the largest private sector bank and uh, you've got a real pulse, right, sitting in the center of all of it. Uh, some concern that maybe, you know, over the last couple of years, we had top end uh, consumption, which really propelled things, right? Bottom end, not so much uh, at all. Now, uh, the concern is top end is kind of maxing out. The middle layer is not really firing uh, yet. Maybe it needs some help. And the bottom end, of course, is uh, where it is. Do you think we're at the stage where we need sort of help, either mon uh, monetary-wise or fiscal-wise? Just wanted a quick word, Parag. I don't think so. I think these are, these are again, blips which come in, aberrations which come in during the course of a high-growth uh, trajectory, which the economy clearly shows. Um, I think the, uh, the infrastructure is in place. We see a lot of consumption happening. In, uh, it's been happening steadily post-pandemic. Uh, some corrections would happen. You see that happening in many sectors. So I don't think this is cause for worry. We've got inflation under control. We've got the investments putting in both by the government and the pri private sector about starting. I think so we've got a good trajectory of growth. Uh, we've got to ensure that uh, you know, some of these aberrations we take care of uh, very well so that you can ensure a smooth growth path. Okay. All right. Uh, we leave it there. Uh, Parag, thank you very much. Uh, short conversation. Had more questions, but uh, out of time. Apo apologies for that uh, technical trouble earlier. So that's uh, Parag from HDFC Bank with a perspective on, uh, uh, you know, credit growth and uh, everything else which is happening as far as banking is concerned.